Hey, this is Nate Story with Bright Agritech, and this is part three of our potassium series. So today we're going to talk a little bit about nutrient deficiencies, specifically potassium deficiencies, how to recognize them, and in the next video we're going to discuss how to treat them. So potassium, once it's taken up by the plant, is mobile. That means the plant can move it around and uh, if it's sent to some tissues to do its job there, the plant can easily reallocate it and take it to new tissues for new growth and reproduction, uh, which basically means that um, when we see deficiency symptoms, they're usually in the older plant tissues. So when uh, we are potassium deficient, we start to see them in older um, growth. Okay, So the older uh, parts of the plant start to show the nutrient deficiency symptoms first. And potassium, like a lot of other uh, deficiencies, is characterized by intervenal chlorosis, okay? And I'll, I'm going to try and spell it here. This basically just means yellowing. Chlorosis is yellowing, okay? And we get yellowing with nitrate deficiency. We get yellowing with all sorts of other things, including iron. Uh, we've discussed that in the iron video. But um, this, this uh, yellowing is between the plant veins. So if we have a plant leaf here, you know, and we've kind of got these veins, um, the yellowing is happening kind of in these areas between the veins of the leaf. And um, this type of chlorosis is uh, what can distinguish, help us distinguish potassium from other forms of chlorosis. So uh, that's, that's an important thing to understand. So it's older growth, it's intervenal chlorosis, and oftentimes we see uh, necrosis or death of the tissues along the fringe of the leaf. So these, uh, the fringes of the leaves will, will oftentimes burn and dry out. And um, this will be concentrated again in some of our older growth. Now, there are some distinctions between potassium deficiency and calcium deficiency, magnesium deficiency, iron deficiency. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a nutrient key to, that I developed uh, for aquaponic systems on the vertical food blog. So go there, it's free. Uh, you can download it and use it in your system to determine uh, if, if this is a potassium deficiency you're seeing or if it's a calcium deficiency or a magnesium deficiency, whatever, okay? So when we do see this, when we see this older growth being affected, when it's intervenal, we see um, kind of this leaf burn in some instances, we see cupping in some instances, and it's concentrated in older growth. So the newer growth is looking relatively um, healthy and the older growth is kind of dying back. Uh, that's kind of a hint that we're having a potassium uh, problem. Another thing that's kind of a telltale thing in my experience is really poor root growth. So if your roots aren't developing very well, if you can grab your seedling and just pull on it and, and it pulls out and it's kind of got a spindly tiny little root system, then oftentimes uh, you, potassium is to blame. Okay, oftentimes potassium is a problem. So um, look for uh, poor root growth as well. And at the end of the day, all of these kind of factors, and, and there's a few more, you know, we've got a cupping, we've got burning, sometimes there's bronzing of the plant leaves. Um, all of these different factors impact plant growth, and they make it really hard to get good growth in your system. And more importantly, uh, if you have fruiting crops, what you'll see is a real uh, slowdown, a real uh, depression in your flower and fruit production. So potassium is a really big deal. It's something we have to keep an eye on. Um, so yeah, this is kind of just a quick overview of what potassium deficiency looks like. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to correct it. Now wrapping up here today, I wanted to have a plant to show you guys that has some potassium deficiency, but um, right now we're on top of all of our plants as far as potassium is concerned, so I don't have a good example for you. But there are lots of examples online, so make sure you go ahead and Google a potassium deficiency, you'll see a host of uh, symptoms and they vary from plant to plant which can make it a little bit complicated, okay? So one potassium deficiency in one plant doesn't necessarily look like a uh, potassium deficiency in another. They're not all the same. So uh, make sure you go to the Vertical Food Blog and download the key for recognizing potassium deficiencies when they occur.